and welcome to It's Not Over with Dr. Dan Farrell. You just caught me right in the middle of a text, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed this program and you'll stay tuned and focused. Uh, here's Dr. Farrell. It is so good to be with you. We've been dealing with this issue. Remember those pictures there? Mm-hmm. We got these pictures of the cast. Uh, they probably cannot see that. Um, but there is the precious little girl that uh, played Nana. She did a great job. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, little Abigail. What, what a sweetheart. sweetheart, man. Great, great job. We've been talking about this. And this is, of course, uh, we'll conclude this series on Titanic, the rest of the story. So let's let's talk about this, Jordan. What do you what are, what things stick out in your mind as far as what do you learn? And of course, to, this program has been a refresher for you because you've done some study. Uh, what do you think you've learned from this? <sighs> Um, one thing I've learned is, uh, God is in control. Mm-hmm. Um, whenever you think it's a sure thing, uh, be very leery. The only thing that I think you can really say for sure and stand upon is his word mm-hmm. and that he is in control outside of that. You know, you just have to surrender everything over to him, you know? Uh, yeah, I do think there I were think. people that did not get on the boat because mm-hmm. they did not have a good feeling. There were some folks that did that. But the ones that, like John Harper, he trusted God. In fact, he had several friends that told him, do not get on this boat. We beg you, don't do it. But he wasn't trying to suggest, oh, it'll be okay. No, no, he wasn't suggesting that. He may have told his little girl that, Nana. But he was basically saying, look, if it's God's time for me to go, then I need to go. And he wanted to go preach at the Moody. He'd been invited several times, and he didn't go the previous year to preach at the Moody uh, Church there in Chicago. Obviously, he didn't make it. And uh, John Harper was a great Scottish preacher, a Baptist preacher at that, a soul winner. And so uh, the thing I've learned is this, that the majority is seldom right. You know, everybody was just so confident and arrogant about the modern... Um, you know, almost invincibility of what man could do. The crowning work of the, um, the Victorian age, the crowning work of the Industrial Revolution was the Titanic. And so when Titanic went down, it was like all of man's hopes that he could just fix all of his problems went down with it. And in fact, that's what they say, that basically the Victorian age and the Industrial Revolution kind of went down with the Titanic as far as this euph- euphoria, you know, mm-hmm. the optimism. And they think they're <laughs> invincible. Right. Now, why is it that I keep, you know, pressing this point that America is like the Titanic? Because I see a parallel. Mm-hmm. There is a parallel. And there were a few people on the Titanic. I, I dare say there was probably uh, several that were saved, maybe a minority but several. And then you had a few like John Harper that was actually preaching and notice though, and and this is a point that I hope that our viewing audience and our listening audience won't, won't miss is that, um, they didn't save the Titanic. No, the Titanic was doomed and guess what? It's still on the bottom of the ocean, right? It joined the other scrap piles of ships that had sunk. So the Titanic was unsavable in a way. It was doomed to go down. But is that what was precious? I mean, were people trying to save the pianos and the china and the various, you know, jewels and so on? In fact, one guy was filling his pocket full of money. And we're talking about hard money. As the ship was going down, well, obviously that worked against him once he was in the water. You see, so your riches perish with thee. So what was precious at the moment that the Titanic was slipping into the chilly waters? What was precious? Lifeboats. The lifeboats or the precious people, just the precious Mm -hmm. people. So in a way, that's what uh, Brother Jordan and I are telling you, that America is going down. You can see it everywhere. And we're morally bankrupt. And we're killing babies. I know we've been doing it for since 73. I don't care. You get, Don't get used to that. That is scandalous. It is scandalous that we would make a mother's womb the crypt 
for a baby. It should be a cradle. Therefore, because we killed babies, and now we're glorifying and glamorizing homosexuality and LGBT, I'm so sick of this junk, and transgenderism, and now you've got parents who are now wanting to give their five-year-old children estrogen if it's a, a little boy who wants to be a girl now. Or a little girl who wants to be a boy, so they give the little girl testosterone. And then when they turn 18, they're going to give them radical surgery because they self-identify as a boy. I'm sorry, pull your, pull your diaper off and look and see if it's a boy or a girl. I mean, are you really that retarded? Are you that reprobate? You cannot figure this out. And so... To- you know, I, I just read an article. I'm sorry. I just read an article today. That a, a mom and his baby, just miraculous, the way God designed it, that a mother's breast milk, mm-hmm. it, it, it is different for, for what um, God has created in her womb for a boy and for a girl. There is different milk that a mom will produce if she has grown a boy, a male child, as opposed mm-hmm. to a female. There's a different milk. That is just... And yet science and these, 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 these liberal idiots can't figure out, well, I'm not going to call it a boy or girl. I'll let it decide when it becomes of age. Wow, wow. Well, uh, your breast milk and the body in which you've given you has decided which sex it is. Yeah. But it's not, let's ignore science unless right. it supports evolution. Of course. Um, the, the way I always look at it is this. Of course, I think a, a, a female has a different brain than does a male. But a female has a womb. A boy does not have a womb. I think there are 750,000 uh, transgender people in America. That is one-third of 1%. It's 0.3. And yet you are going to force the rest of us to accept, to tolerate, condone. And if we don't, then we're not compassionate. Look, I, I, I am compassionate towards transgender people. I think there's a compassionate way to help them. And it's through the gospel. And it's through common sense. And, and it's through just being in a tender way. And I understand you got to be a little ginger with this, but be honest with them. Honesty is, is I think, the, the, is the quick way to, so, to, the, to mm-hmm. the solution. But my point is, the, our society, it's not just the transgender people. It's the people that push it. It's the parades. It's, it's, it's all your heterosexuals that are acting like you're broad-minded if you you know, tolerate it and promote it. And then like the one lady in Canada had a little baby and she was, does not want to call it a boy or a girl. She wants the child. I think the little baby's name is storm. Wants storm to, to self identify itself as a boy or a girl. It's going to be in a storm when it grows up. Look, you got five year olds and two year olds and five month old babies that have reprobate parents. That's right. That's the problem. And w- this society yes. is broken. Now, we're taking on a lot of water, man. And you got a few, you know, loud mouths like me. I wish I had millions listening to me. Not that I'm uh, that I merit or deserve that, but you know, thank God for the preachers that do have the listening ear of thousands and millions of people and the sirens are going off. You see, and the SOS is going out there and, and, and the, the flares are bursting in the black sky. The ship is going down. And yet some of you, all you care about is going to your, you know, your recreation. You want to go to your favorite football team, your baseball game. And, and all you care about is your pizza, your car payment, your house and having fun and pretending everything is fine. You're playing with the ice on the upper deck while the ship goes down. And let me say this. The biggest problem is not just the old American uh, old glory going down and the USSS Constitution. That's not the only problem. It's your going down. You see? And so you can kiss your IRA goodbye and your retirement and your health care. The ship is going down, my friend. And this means that many of us are going to die. And those that preach like this, by the way, some of you, you know, if you don't like this program and you wish guys like I were, were not on the air, don't worry. We won't be very soon. There is an attack against Christianity in America. Not religion. Let's get it straight. Bible-based Christianity. There is such an attack going on right now. They're going to mm-hmm. shut guys like me up. They're shutting. They're just if you're a viewer, you're one of our followers on uh, Facebook. Facebook is even shutting down a lot of things. 
Yeah, they're they are they are screening things um, that that have say like the Bible or Jesus and yeah, and, and things like this. They are screening. They're what about Islam? Are they shutting down Islam? Maybe radical Islam. Maybe they are. Um, look, I, I'm I'm not. Be, this is not hate speech. You know, you can you can throw terms around. We don't we don't hate transgender people. We do not hate homosexuals. I don't even hate uh, the precious dear ladies that get snookered and deceived to have an abortion. I feel sorry for the girls that go through with that. You're going to have psychological problems when you go through with this. You're better off just have the baby and give it up to a, for adoption. You see, you say, well, I can't do that. Why? Who cares? It's just fallopian tissue, just uterine tissue. Why can't you give it up for adoption? Well, I'm, I'll get attached to it. Ah, you may get attached to a baby. Well, if that's the case, then don't abort it. See, don't abort the baby. Don't worry about the embryo. It's a, if it's potential human life, it's human. Got it? Because, I mean, I think that's the way it works, isn't it? If it's potential human life, it's human. Don't kill it. But my point is we're broken. We're broken. And then our pulpits and our churches are a travesty. And the Bible said this would happen. In the last days, perilous times shall come. You see, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to verse 7. We're in the last days. In fact, we're in the, we're in the closing scenes. Now, for those Christians that are listening to us, and I think it's the majority, I do believe in a pre-trib rapture. But that doesn't mean we're getting out of here unscathed. And if you think that God has to come and get us out of here before we suffer when Christians all over the world are suffering for the cause of Christ, I don't think we're the pets of Jehovah God. And I think we're in trouble, Jordan. I do. I um, agree with you. I believe persecution is coming. I believe there will be a crackdown on programs like this. And so if you want, you may be able to record this program because in another year or so, it's possible that I'll be off the air. And you need to understand that the old Titanic has just hit reality. And I think what God's doing is God is giving us a little bit of time to get ourselves ready. So you preachers need to start preaching this to your congregations. It's time to wake up, man. It's time to wake up. Now, are you saved? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? He died to save sinners. You provide the sinner, he'll provide the Savior. I'll close here in a few minutes. I'd like to thank you so much for tuning into our program here, and it's not over with Dr. Dan Farrell. And it has been uh, quite a journey. This has been six different programs we've done on the, the Titanic, the rest of the story. And if you're listening right now, hopefully, hopefully you have listened to all the six. Um, but I encourage you, if you haven't, if you're just now catching on to the sixth one, uh, maybe a friend shared it, go ahead and, and, and search for the, the rest of the, the, uh, the other five uh, along with this sixth one. And I believe you'll be encouraged and not more than encouraged, enlightened because, you know, sometimes, um, ignorance is bliss, but I don't think you want to be ignorant in this fact. You want to be aware and alert as to what's going on in the path. So please watch these episodes. You can watch them on our Facebook page. You can you can get a hold of them mainly on our YouTube channel. That's where you can really go. And also sermonaudio.com, so it's not over. You can also uh, check out our web page, our main web page, which we are, are showcased on, which is morningstarnetwork.org, morningstarnetwork.org. You can also give financially on that web page through, through uh, PayPal, very user-friendly, not hard to operate at all. And it's very safe, and it's also tax deductible. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please tune in next time with Dr. Dan Farrell. I'm most concerned about your precious soul, not just America. Holding forth and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. 1 Timothy 1, verse 19. My friend, if you don't put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will make shipwreck. And it's a terrible thing, you see, because it's one thing to die, but then to go to hell, that's a mistake that'll never be corrected.